and welcome to the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9. I'm Paul Kretschmer. On today's broadcast, I'll be interviewing an author of a commentary for preachers on the book of Philippians. His name is Wayne Detzler. Yeah, they tell me we moved 36 times in my life. Uh, my wife and I were missionaries in Europe for 20 years with Greater Europe Mission. And then I had pastorates uh, here in the United States, uh, including one in Meriden, where we first, of course, became familiar with WIHS. Uh, about, uh, uh, when I finally retired from Meriden, it was retirement age, we moved to North Carolina, and I helped to start a seminary there with a, a friend of mine, and uh, it's doing very well, so we finally got to retire again and come back to North to, to Connecticut. So in terms of your service with the Lord, you're determined to wear out and not rust out. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah, I use that phrase all the time. And they tell me I'm not, not wearing out so far. Still going. <laughs> uh, one of the things I had not known you for previously was commentaries. Could you describe briefly for listeners why you undertook Philippians, a preacher's commentary? Well, I, 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 I've preached on Philippians uh, most of my ministry. I, I've been in the ministry 60 years now, and I've preached through the book several times, including once uh, at the church in, in England, where I wrote uh, a, a small book about the, about the, the, the book, about Philippians. But uh, I now I'm preaching through it uh, one more time here at Nelson Hall in Elam Park, where we have Sunday services. And in connection with that, I, I wrote this commentary to sort of prepare me and uh, my fellow chaplain here with whom I'm preaching. And so it's something I just did a lot of spade work and a lot of uh, exegetical work on the text so we would have a material for us to use as we preach uh, from Philippians. Okay, uh, so you must, I would assume, be extremely familiar with Philippians. at, at this. Yeah, I, at, at I really this... am. I, I said to... My, my wife, uh, the other day, I, I wish I had memorized it, actually, because I, I feel like I've been working at it all my life. Now, a preacher's commentary, what sets this apart from maybe a commentary that I might find on my bookshelf in, in, my, uh, in my apartment? Well, I wanted, I wanted to prepare a commentary based on preaching and using some insights uh, for expounding the text. You know, what's the background of the text? What's the Greek basis of the text? And I wanted to dig deeply into the text, so uh, when a, a pastor would, wants to use this book uh, to prepare a sermon on Philippians, for instance, he'll have a lot of material at his at his uh, disposal, and he'll be able to kind of uh, fill out his his study of the text with background material. Okay, um, I I've noticed uh, in reading through it that that it has a very highly readable style. Is that pretty much a characteristic for for what you set down on paper in the past? Yeah, it really is. I uh, Paul, when I mentioned we were missionaries, uh, we had to earn some uh, extra income for family vacation, so I became a, a freelance journalist, and I really honed my skills as a freelance journalist. And I've tried to apply writing skills to. Uh, the books I've written since then. What would you say is the outstanding points that the writer attempted to make in that letter, which we know is Philippians, that maybe either is consistent with other portions of the New Testament in that in that era, or perhaps sets it apart uh, as a particular message that God wanted to convey that he had chosen to go through that? I, I think that the, that the Apostle Paul wanted to write to believers who were under incredible stress. Don't forget, this was a bad time in the Roman Empire when there was a lot of persecution of Christians. We see that from the book of Acts, how persecuted Christians were. And Paul writes to them as persecuted believers, and it really encourages them to stand strong, to stand faithful, to trust the Lord, that the Lord is, 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 can protect them and bring them through a time of persecution. And so I think Paul is really trying to, to bolster these young Christians just to stand firm. Uh, I, I, I am always intrigued by the little statement that occurs, occurs in other Pauline epistles as well as this one, where he says, I really want to come and see you. <laughs> he would love to go and see them personally, but of course he's in jail. Paul will never again be free. And so this is the way he, he reaches out to his beloved Christian friends, most of whom he has led to faith in the Lord personally. In terms of... of um, a study like that, then 
Would this be something that you would have at your elbow next to your Bible as you're working your way through a passage? Or is this something that's more like a reference where someone looks something up? I, I, it's, it's in paragraph four. It was in verse form. And I, as you've seen, I, I have a paragraph or two after each verse. And, and I think I would have it at my elbow uh, with an open Bible next to it. And as I read the text, I would then read the commentary on that text to help me kind of uh, fill out the, the background. Would this be something that only a preacher would find useful, or is this something that maybe a layman such as myself who wants to broaden and expand my insight uh, would also find useful, in your opinion? Well, the thing is, uh, since it's come out, I've sent it to family members and so on, and the, the commentary coming back is that a lot of them are using it for devotional reading along with, uh, with Philippians. Read a little bit of Philippians in their morning devotions, and then read whatever the text is, and it helps them to understand the book of Philippians. I noticed that my wife has has a bookmark in it where she's read uh, mostly through the book at this point, and uh, I know she reads it, uh, may read along with her devotions also. I must say that it reflects the length of the of the epistle that 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 works with it. It's not. Uh, a forbidding book. It's it's quite a, a compact little volume that um, might encourage people to reach for it in a way that maybe they wouldn't have reached for something by G. Campbell Morgan, for instance. Yeah, that's right. And, and that would be a, a good comparison with G. Campbell Morgan or Matthew Henry or some of the uh, stable old commentaries, Lenski, for instance, uh, that it's, it's shorter. It's only 200 pages. And so for any given verse, there's not more than a page and a half to read. Uh, how is this being distributed then, sir? It's being distributed by uh, a, uh, an on, uh, uh, a self-publishing company. Uh, and and it, I'm also, it's also up on Amazon. And so if people just write my name on Amazon, write Philippians, I think that it comes up. And then most people that I'm finding around here at Eman Park are, are buying it off of Amazon. Uh, is this is this something that you anticipate continuing to do the the writing that you've that you've alluded to earlier when you felt the need for some extra income for vacations and so writing is well, something you now, got into? Now it's, now it's more of a hobby than anything else, uh, and, and I, I have been praying about another, the next the next book, and I've been looking at uh, things like the Thessalonian epistles, and uh, at first I thought of Colossians, but Colossians is a real parallel to Philippians. So the Thessalonian epistle, First Thessalonians, for instance, would be uh, interesting because it it does it would, would be different. Uh, and as I've been praying through this, I've even been looking at James uh, because I have never written anything on James, and uh, it is such a an incredible book in terms of living out the Christian faith, faith at work, so to speak. Uh, and and I might I, so I'm looking at several books right now. And I just want to spend a couple of weeks praying about it, and then I'll take, tackle the next one. <laughs> Touch briefly on, uh, would you please, on your current responsibilities at Elam Park in Chester. The head of Christian Ministries is a younger man, uh, 60 years old, but he's a younger man, and he's uh, he oversees our ministry, uh, and he also visits uh, very, very generously and very helpfully in, in our community. Well, thank you for your time again, sir. Um, appreciate very much touching base with you. And um, should you wish, wish to reach out again as time goes on and, and your work continues there, uh, feel free to give me a give, shoot an email to me. Glad to do it, Paul. Nice to hear from you. Once again, my guest on today's WISS Journal has been the Reverend Wayne Detzler, who is currently one of four chaplains at Elam Park Retirement Community in Cheshire. He's been speaking about his book, A Preacher's Commentary on Philippians. For further information about what you heard on today's broadcast, call us at 860-346-1049, 860-346-1049, or drop us a line by email to office at wihsradio.org. That's office at wihsradio.org. The opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily those of the staff or management of the station. I'm Paul Kretzmer for the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9 WIHS.